All right. It says we're live. Let's let's find out if we actually are or not. Wait, I'm waiting for the notifications to come through. I believe that's the Facebook one. Excellent. Have that. Let's make sure. Oh wait, I'm not I'm not on YouTube. I keep forgetting I'm not on YouTube. Uh on the Twitter, make sure Twitter's live. So it should be. I haven't done this in a minute. I haven't done this in a minute. There we go. Twitter's live. Twitter's got a video. And we're going live on Rockfin. All right. Yeah. Slowly coming back, guys. It's all it's all slowly coming back to me. Uh cool. Thank you guys for hanging out. We're gonna do um we're gonna, we're gonna do this little live stream here, talking about some topics. I'm gonna do these semi infrequently. Um, I'm gonna do these twice a month. Is essentially how I'm uh, how I'm planning on doing this. So, uh, yeah, I'm and I'm gonna I'm trying to figure out what the best way to kind of handle this portion of the program is gonna be, which is hey, we're gonna share stuff now. Uh, I didn't want to do a big intro thing like I did before because I did that before. Um, like I did a, I did a little, you know, pre pre roll intro thing, and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do that this time around. Um, so I, I so I kind of didn't. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put up the little banner to tell you guys that you guys should share the thing because you guys should share the thing. Uh, that's up. And then I'm going to do a quick little bit of sharing just in a few of the groups that I know, um, watch this thing. And hopefully that will be quick because I want to, I want to dive into, uh, into some of the big topics that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and I tried to kind of pick some, some important ones and, and, and a fun one here. Uh, both of them are important. It's just uh, one of them is, I think, a little bit more of a serious topic than the other one is because the first story is kind of just kind of making fun of uh, Nancy Pelosi, but that's kind of it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel a little bit, you know, like making fun of these fucking cretins, let's call them cretins. Yeah, that's a good word. Cretins is a good word. Um, so. Yeah, it's just very. It's so I, I kind of find it kind of like shooting fish in a barrel, but uh, there there is some important stuff uh, that's kind of brought up um, in in the in the old topic there. So uh, let me put this up real quick, and let me share out the Rockfin links because that's important as well. Rockfin's the big one, though, right? That's the one that I think everybody's trying to build and uh, and get people over to. But right now, I'm streaming on Rockfin, on Facebook, and on Twitter, uh, primarily because I didn't want to particularly deal with Odyssey because Odyssey, not that Odyssey's terrible or anything, because they're not. They're they're pretty great. Uh, they're a good alternative to. Um, YouTube and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but they just, their, their streaming platform's a little bit newer, so it's a little bit harder to work with. Uh, and this is like the first stream I'm doing in like three months. So I wanted to kind of take it easy a little bit because I had like six stories I wanted to cover. And I was like, well, let's not go crazy. <laughs> let's let's make sure like you could do this one um, and then go from there. So yeah, so I hope you guys hit the share button, hit the like button, let some people know that we are... Uh, we are doing this. Uh, Melanie, it's good to see you. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Got a new setup. Got everything uh, mostly going. I got. I, I probably have to soundproof this place a little bit more, but I think we're taking care of that this weekend. Aiden, it's it's good to see you as well. We I, I am back, putting out some content uh, and uh, talking about ta talking about some shit. Um, hey, I want to mention this real quick before we dive into our stories. Uh, is tonight, if you're in Pittsburgh and you got nothing to do, uh, come down to the Funhouse because there's a really awesome comedy show called The Funhouse Mirror. 
uh, that one of my best friends in the whole world, Zach Funk, is hosting and producing. Uh, my friend Amanda Averill is headlining. Uh, fantastic lineup of comics. Uh, good drinks. Fan- beautiful atmosphere. Uh, it's it's honestly one of my favorite venues in the whole world uh, to perform at. And and it's a, it's a venue that I get to call my home club because I get to go there every week to try out new shit. Uh, or or just or honestly just whatever I want to do because it's sort of a very welcoming um, welcoming crowd and welcoming atmosphere. So if you're free in Pittsburgh, come down to the Fun House 8 p.m. Uh, and check out the Fun House Mirror Comedy Show. It's the first one, um, and if it does really well, we'll have more of those kind of comedy shows. And and right now Pittsburgh needs more of these kinds of like showcases where people get to headline and stretch their legs and, and work out uh, a longer a longer set. And you get to see some cool up-and-coming comics as well. So, yeah. So if you're in Pittsburgh, uh, make that happen. Make that fucking happen. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, I think most of you guys still remember how this fucking thing works. Uh, I'm going to run through the story. I'm going to run through the points I want to hit. I'm, you know, we're going to we're going to do a little breakdown of the video. And I encourage you guys to leave comments, uh, but don't be dicks in the comment section. That is that is my one rule. Don't be an asshole. Don't don't insult people or call people names and, and all that kind of shit. Just, you know, be be constructive, be productive. And uh, at the end of each segment, I'm going to try I, I try to go through and, and pick out some comments uh, highlight them and and kind of have a, and and that way we can kind of have a conversation um, about the topic at hand. Uh, so as long as the comments aren't like over over the top and and ridiculous and uh, calls for violence and that sort of stuff, then then it's a very good chance that I will probably pull your comment up and uh, and 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 read it and have a discussion based around it. So that's uh, that's that's kind of the rules of how this thing works. So let's jump in. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this video or not. I know it's been kind of circulating through some of the some of the bigger lefty channels here. Uh, it is it is fantastic. Uh, I think this might be one of my new favorite fucking polit- take takedown of politicians. And and I like once you watch the video, it's just like Abby Martin doesn't actually like take down Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi just takes herself down. That's kind of how this thing runs. Uh, Abby Martin asks a fantastic question that deserves an answer. Uh, She does uh, a job of a fucking journalist, which uh, a a journalist, uh, for for those of you watching in America, uh, because this is a not a lot of people know what this job actually is, um, is is uh, not somebody uh, that uh, gobbles the balls of politicians. So, so think of like the opposite of that, uh, and that's what a journalist is. They, a journalist is not supposed to be a politician's friend. They are supposed to hold their feet to the fire and make them answer questions uh, as, as the one that uh, we're going to watch Abby Martin <laughs> ask Nancy Pelosi. And, you know, if they don't get a satisfactory answer, they're supposed to push back uh, either through commentary or through follow-up questions and so on and so forth. But you'll see what happens at the end of the video as to as to why Abby doesn't get the opportunity to do that. So without any further ado, I, I think we should we should start watching this um, this clip here. And it's rather hilarious, I think. So there we go. All right. I'm going to do. Let me see if this is going to. Oh, no. OK, cool. I'm I'm still above the thing. Cool. And you guys get to see the video a little bit more. That's pretty exciting. Um, and uh, awesome. And and if we're not hearing anything, leave some comments. It, uh, I'm, I'm going to hit play on this thing now. And if and I'll you know, you know, the you know, the dip, I'll, I'll pause and do my little commentary thing. Uh, and then we'll jump back into the video. But uh, here we go. OK, so this is this is a cop 26, which is, you know, over at Glasgow and everything it was a big climate change convention that they had. Uh, it, it's it's like Comic Con, but for people that pretend to give a shit about climate change, uh, that's what COP twenty six was. Okay, uh, here we go. A woman, I want a woman, a woman, a woman. A woman. <laughs> Gender equality. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I don't. Let's see. <laughs> so, but just even within the first fucking ten seconds, it's absolutely absurd, right? It's fucking ridiculous because she she calls for a woman. I want a woman. I want a woman, and then she just goes gender equality. <laughs> she 
yeah okay man uh that's that's cool if there was ever a moment in in time that really captured uh how much of the democratic party and their identity politics is total bullshit and uh and and it's just them kind of playing platitudes there it's this moment right here right because then at the end of it whenever it like didn't happen fast enough because what what pelosi expects and what the democrats have come to expect is whenever they start playing the identity politics card um and and look i'm not i i have my issues with identity politics i'm not like boo identity politics or anything like whenever i do see uh minority representation in in any form of media whether it be pop culture media whether it be uh pop politics media or what have you it is exciting to see that for sure but they're playing they're, they're not sincere about it um these people are doing it to to get pats on the back and little applauds and all that kind of shit, right? That's that's why that's why they they're doing it. And if there was ever a moment that proves that fucking thing, it's this moment right here, right? This moment right before Abby Martin comes up. Um, and I'm not sure if Nancy Pelosi, you know, because she goes, uh, maybe I don't want a woman, right? I'm not sure if she recognized who Abby Martin was. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt that. Nancy Pelosi is aware of the existence of the Empire Files um, and uh, and Abby Martin uh, or real journalists for that matter. Like it might have it might have thrown her off completely um, that they were letting women be journalists like real journalists and not just, uh, you know, pretty dolled up figures on corporate media that uh, say nice things sometimes or or are Tommy Laren. That could have that itself could have been a huge shock to Nancy Pelosi. She's never heard of such things. A, a lady news reporter, what you know, it's like, like maybe she was just saying, "Oh, I want a woman. I want a woman." As as like it's time for women journalists. And then when Abby Martin showed up, she was like, "Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm not sure if this is actually what I want." Uh, because you know, uh, Nancy has a, pr a problem with. Uh, progress mostly uh i think because uh, she is part of a party that doesn't give a fuck about progress uh they do like to say the word progress though quite a bit uh so let's let's um let's let's check out uh, abby martin's question abby martin with the empire files Woo! speaker pelosi you just presided over a, a large increase in the pentagon budget this pentagon budget is already massive the pentagon is a larger polluter than 140 countries combined. How can we seriously talk about net zero if there is this bipartisan consensus to constantly expand this large contributor to climate change, which is exempt from these conferences? Military is exempt from climate talks. Boom. Abby Martin coming in hot, coming in hot with those questions. Uh, so and that's a very reasonable question, right? Uh, I don't think Abby uh, was being rude in that or or scathing. Like, that's corporate media likes to do that whenever like independent media kind of asks these sort of questions, uh, because independent media. I mean, we have every goddamn right to be angry. Uh, we get suppressed nonstop. We get called names. We get we we constantly have to defend our right to be. Uh, on the internet and say the things that we have to say and and have researched and and all that stuff, right? So yeah, if 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 we get a little angry about it, we have every right to get a little angry about it because we've been treated like shit. But Abby asks a very reasonable question uh, in in this clip: uh, Why is the military exempt? from climate talks right uh, be, being that the pentagon is one of the largest polluters of, uh, on on planet earth being that war is uh, the largest polluter on planet earth and and uh, it, it's just awful all around is why are they exempt from these talks why don't military have to show up to be like hey this is the damage that you're doing uh and maybe and maybe it's time for you to you fucking stop and i don't know go away forever uh, what about that plan as a as a climate solution? Go military, fucking go away for the rest of eternity. 
But that's a that's an excellent question, right? Why is the military exempt from these climate talks? Is it because including them in the climate talks shows the true effects of what the what the war industry does to the planet, right? It, I mean, think about it. it you, you have jets in the air that are constantly flying. You have explosions that are destabilizing, uh, destabilizing, you, you know, rock structures and ground structures. You have you have piles and piles of garbage that they have to light on fire. You have piles and piles of human excrement that they have to light on fire. They're, they're soldiers that are sick from this process. They're soldiers that are sick from the way that the military decides that they're going to take care of their waste. And that's not even counting the amount of, of, uh, of pollution that, that the war generally creates, right? These machines are not run on, on fucking the same fuel that the, the, <laughs> the DeLorean from Back to the Future 2 is being run on they're not being run on that sort of stuff uh they're being run on on the thing that they're fighting the wars for right so it's sort of again the snake that's kind of eating itself is war runs on oil it runs on fossil fuel and what are most of these wars about fucking oil and fossil fuels it's about the control of oil and fossil fuels so that we can we can have this fuel and make money off of it that's that's really all it's about um, and that's part of the reason why we're in, in Latin America as well is because they most of most of the countries in Latin America have figured out how to nationalize their oil um, and and turn a profit from it and take that profit and help people. Uh, so that's why we don't like Latin America. Right. But this thing that they we're going to war over is the thing that fuels the machine that we need to go to war in order to get the thing. So it's just it's just this fucking insane cycle that doesn't make any logical sense that's the truth is is that why they're exempt from the climate talks because all of this stuff will will come out and we'll start talking about it or is it because that on 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 every level war is really about the extinction of our species and the planet right because climate change is that climate change can can lead to the extinction of of the species and the planet for sure, right? Like we're causing our own destruction. But then you you throw war on top of it, where we take these crazy, intense, mach you know, um, um, machines that can kill a, a, a whole slew of people, and then we fight each other with them, and um, a bunch of people fucking die. Like a million Iraqis are dead, probably way more. How many Americans died in that fight? How many Americans died in Syria? How many Syrians died in Syria? How many Iranians have already been killed in the conflict? How many Yemenis have been killed in the conflict? You know, how many people are we killing globally around the world because of this fucking war machine that needs to constantly be fed? So not only is it contributing to climate change, which is going to cause our extinction, if we don't do anything about it right fucking now, we're also just physically killing ourselves, <laughs> killing each other, which is also going to lead to our own extinction. So on every level, there's absolutely no positives that you can claim will come out of war other than this vague notion of freedom, which we don't really get uh, for, for a, a, a bajillion different reasons, right? Or they accept uh, exempt because you'd have to admit the type of pollution that the military industrial complex causes right or is it because you know they'd have to fucking admit <laughs> we have um that all of this shit all the cop 26 was really for show it wasn't really for anything except just a performative piece that's that's really what it boils down to, right? Is they'll have to come out and say, well, we don't actually have any sort of plan or any sort of idea of stopping the military industrial complex. We have no real plan to put an end to climate change at all. We're going to keep keep funneling more money into the fossil fuel industry and keep funneling more money into the war industry so we can co-opt other people's natural resources for ourselves. That's the truth about it. That's what they're afraid is going to come out if they answer a question like that. So here's how they answer the question. Well, I, I just want to use an example, if I can. Um, you know, the sea level rise is an important part of, uh, you know, what's happening to the climate. And I am not a defense person, but I've had so many talks with the Defense Department, with the Navy in particular, about how they have to respond to what's going on. So I really do think that there is no reason why what we're putting together, you know, 
uh, with Build Back Better and other things can't yeah. respond to the Defense Department and, and, and have the same impact in terms of reducing emissions. And I do think that the Defense Department is very much aware of the fact that they have to play a major role both from a strategic as well as, you know, for the good of the world. So I don't see what we're doing in any way or, you know, increasing the defense budget as being something that's inconsistent with climate action. I really don't. And that so, I mean, that's masterful deflection of, of actually answering the fucking question, uh, which is what plans do you have to stop climate change via the military industrial complex and why do you keep mo giving money to the pentagon and the defense but like why is the defense budget always going up when they're one of the largest fucking polluters on the planet and if you're really serious about climate change why isn't that number going down in order to give them more you know ways to be renewable ways to fucking not kill the planet uh, and he starts talking about sea levels rising, which is like, well, that has nothing to do with what was asked. It's just, well, this is a thing that was said once. I'm going to bring that up because I actually don't know how to answer this question without losing billions of dollars from Raytheon or General Dynamics or Boeing or any of these fucking war profiteers that have paid for, for these people to be in office still. And then he talks about reducing emissions, and it just makes me go back to think like, to Elizabeth Warren's plan uh, because she's the only ca candidate that's even remotely addressed this. And even her response was just like, well, this is fucking weird. Uh, Cause her response was that we should be, we should like, there should be more composting that happens in war. And it's like, well, based on what, like, are you talking about composting our enemies? Is that what you want to do? You want to compost our enemies in, in this situation? Like, is that what this dude's bringing up? Like, oh, we're going to reduce emissions. How? We're going to be composting. Composting what? It doesn't matter. It's like, oh, is this a Soylent Green or People moment in human history right now? Is that we're going to we're gonna be like, oh, yeah, there, sure, there was a million Iraqis dead, but look at all these fucking trees. <laughs> like, it's not an answer. It's It's like... What are you talking about? Seriously, I'm not making that up. Like you can, you can go to see Elizabeth Warren wants to. It's, a, it's it just really sounds like she wants to compost the shit out of our enemies. That's what she wants to do. Uh, but I mean, that's a non-answer. It's 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 a response that didn't really answer the question, but it hit some of the terms right. And and here's he, this Nancy Pelosi is about to do the exact same fucking thing, but. Uh, much better than he did, I think. If I just add that um, the National Security Advisors all tell us that the climate crisis is a national security matter. Uh, it is, of course, a health matter for our children, the water they drink, the air they breathe, etc. It is a jobs issue between clean, good, clean technologies uh, being the future of our workforce and the training for all of that. It is a national security issue because of the uh, uh, all of the con conditions that climate crisis produces. I won't go into all of them, but they do ca are cause for migration, conflict over habitat and resources, and again, uh, a security challenge globally. And then the fourth, of course, the moral issue that we need to pass on this planet to future generations in a responsible way. Now, recognizing what you said, we recognize that as well. And a big user of, of uh, fuel, uh, there have been many initiatives over time, more successful with more technology to convert from fossil fuel uh, to other, other sources of, uh, of fuel of, to run the military. Because We're gonna compost our enemies. Difference. Transportation, defense, these are two of the biggest, uh, that can make the biggest difference in all of that, and that is something we're very, very focused on. As I say, the Defense Department sees this systemically, that we have to stop it as a national security issue, and one way to do that is to stop our dependence on fossil fuels, which exacerbate the climate crisis. But I, I got a point. It really felt like, whenever she was giving this speech, it just it felt like the same energy that like a fucking high school kid giving a book report to a book they've never read it's just that's the energy that i that that she was giving that answer because she didn't really 
say a lot. I mean, she gave the same kind of levels of platitudes that you always hear when when somebody brings up a, a question about renewable energy sources, right? Like, why aren't we investing more in solar? And they're like, oh, we got to, man. We got to. That's the that's the key. You get, you know, the sun, you get it. You get it because the sun, it's there, you, you know, and uh, and the solar flares that those those are things you know there was a episode of star trek we're looking into that uh we're we're trying to we're trying to get a hold of gene roddenberry to help us out seems like he he kind of had like she kind of gave that kind of an answer and and she like she was like yeah the, they know that it's a national security issue uh but we're what we're causing the national security issue so let's not do a lot about it because I feel like the solution is to just kind of like end the Pentagon, you know, and we don't want to fucking, um, because that's the economy. I mean, America's economy runs on, um, you know, fucking war. It's just, but that's she just it's just like fuel. Uh, fuel is a thing that uh, that we use in war for war, uh, and transportation. That which is the idea that uh, you know you move. You 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 move one kind of goods or services or services uh, to like a different look a bit different goods or or services because that takes that's fuel and we do that with the military and the transportation and then what we what happens with the it goes into the air because that's because we and then because of the fires that happen inside of a uh, an in, it's like in compartment. And then when it goes into the uh, the, it go, in the atmosphere, and then it and then it sit and then it becomes rain uh, is what happened because the, because it it's in the atmosphere and and rain comes uh, because of that and then that happens uh, and that needs to happen. It's a part of uh, the circle of life, uh, and uh, and that's it. That's the answer. <laughs> And everybody knows, like, I'm pretty sure every fucking journalist sitting in that uh, in that in that room is just like, oh, well, that was that. Well, I feel like nobody answered uh, a goddamn thing in the in the three minutes that we've spent fucking listening to you guys. It's just a master class in how to fucking bullshit. You know, like you took you, you like I, did they all take a free writing class in college? That's what they. That's because that's what their answers sound like. There's no plan in there. There's no plan on what the Pentagon's. This is yeah, they well, and then they address it right. They're like, oh well, it's a national security issue. It's a health issue. It's a work issue. Well, if you know that it's a health issue, then why aren't you helping the people of Flint, and Pittsburgh, and Toledo, and all these cities that have lead in their water? I don't have drinkable fucking water. And not everybody can afford a Brita filter. Not everybody can afford the little thing that goes in the tap. You know, why haven't you done anything about that? That's a, cl that's a climate change issue. People are losing homes because of, you know, record number of hurricanes, storms. You don't want to do anything about that? That's a climate change issue, too. Oh, it's a jobs issue. Oh, yeah, well, how come we haven't talked about... The incentives for green jobs, the incentives for for renewable sources of energy to be uh, invested into, right? Divesting from fossil fuels and investing in solar or wind or batteries, right? That's a big thing. Oh, where does the sun go at night? Oh man! So yeah, you have batteries. You have a better, more efficient grid. You know, that's if if you know all that information, why haven't you done anything about it? Because they know the talking points, and the talking points are the only things. But the talking points are all platitudes when it comes down to actually writing legislation and taking action behind it, listening to what climate activists have to say. It's it's all in through one year, out through the other. They ain't saying shit. They're not doing shit. They're saying a lot of shit. They ain't doing shit. Here's a grand conclusion of, of the, this fantastic three-minute video here. Dad, I thank you all for being here. Unfortunately, they're telling us they have to clean the room. I didn't know they about that. They have to clean the room. They have to clean the I mean, immediately after the fucking question is asked, uh, you know, it's, it's well, they got to clean the room. 
I didn't know they were going to make us clean their. I didn't. Well, we asked this question about uh, essentially our pimps, the, mil- the the Pentagon and the military, who we have to keep increasing the budget for, because uh, because it's the pimp, uh, Pentagon pimp P P. You get it. You guys get it. But just after the conference is over, I'm sure she went back and be like, "Who the fuck let an actual journalist in here? Who actually fuck? That was a that was a legitimate question that she, that I fucking wh- who did that? Was it Jerry? Where's Jerry? Jerry's fired. Kill Jerry. That's what happens when you get fired by Nancy Pelosi. Boom. That's what happens. You don't fuck with the P dog. And then she high fives people as somebody hands her champagne. This is what I imagine uh happens in the uh, uh the back room of uh of this conference but look i i mean how much more proof do we really need that these climate conferences are nothing they're they're just they're just staged performances uh for these uh, for these fucking elites to get together every couple of years and say look we're doing something about it the solar you know that we, we, somebody mentioned it and I was like, that's the sun. I know that one. That's the big, big fireball in the sky. And then when it goes night, night, it becomes the night. That's why it's called night, night. That's all they do. They just fucking say a bunch of shit. And everybody goes, yes. But this time, not a lot of people went, oh, yeah, you guys are. Thank you for saying the things that we've been thinking about in our brain houses. Like, fucking nobody's saying that shit. Everybody's like, yeah, but you guys said this at the Paris Climate Accords. And then you guys didn't do anything about it. And you have fucking Mr. Fossil Fuels <laughs> as your president. Most of you are in the pockets of fossil fuel companies. What are you, what are you guys going to do about that? Are you guys going to help fracking towns? I just fucking started watching Brockmire, and that's the that is like one of the villains in the show. Other than just Brock Brockmire himself being a villain to himself, uh, because hey, self hatred. Uh, but uh, but the villain is a fossil fuel company, and I was like, that's awesome. F- fucking, that's great. Like, I'm so glad that that's happening in that show. Like in pop culture, we're starting to address that fracking companies are actually evil, and the fucking lunacy of them saying that they're a mom and pop company, like. <laughs> You know, this family-owned business. Yeah, you're a trillion-dollar family-owned business. I'm sure that's... How many families do you know that make that kind of fucking money? But there were no solutions offered here, you know, the, which is which is what we were looking for, right? That's the point of COP26. And it just... Uh, it, 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 all these conferences, and we're going to see these conferences happen because the, the problems are becoming unignorable. The activists are becoming unignorable. Uh, corporate media has to start talking about this shit because things like free Assange and you know climate change and all of these fucking topics trend on Twitter. They become viral sensations. And so what do you do? You, you can't just ignore it. There's money to be made off of the viral sensation, so they have to talk about it, which I'm sure isn't great because the next ad is for fucking some fracking company or some you know Shell Oil or Exxon Mobil or some bullshit you know, and you've just, it's just like, how long is that going to be sustainable? So, so you got to do these fucking platitude parties to, to get people to calm down. And then when people are calmed down, they can go back to peddling their propaganda bullshit. Instead of trying to cover real legitimate stories, which then they have to do more work uh, because that's, that's harder propaganda. Like when people learn the truth, it's harder to propagandize them. When you get an educated populace, it's harder to propagandize them. All right, uh, let's move on to the second story here. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I was a little shocked when I saw this uh, this story uh, on uh, Crime Think and uh, what was the second? Common Dreams is where I saw the story. Uh, and you can get a, a lot of these stories are also available on radindymedia.com as well. Uh, because uh, they are a fantastic site where you can get a, a lot of uh, lefty sources that are, are going to be suppressed on YouTube and on Google and things like that. So there, you can find them all in one one place, and that place is radindymedia.com, just in a good place for getting stories like this. Um, yeah, I get I get a bunch of my stories from them, from radindymedia.com. So 
Uh, this story was about Minneapolis uh, voting down, voting down uh, the bill to defund the police. And, and it wasn't particularly a full on defund the police bill eh, eh, per se, uh, uh, which I always feel very pretentious when I say per se. Uh, you know, I feel like I should push my glass. Oh, it wasn't to uh, defund the police uh, bill uh, per se. Like, I feel like I should have like a Chardonnay in my hand or some shit uh, when I say that. But the bill itself uh, did have some uh, budgetary proclamations. That's not the right word, uh, but that's the word that came to my head. Uh, there's portions of the bill that talk about the police budget and the police budget would be reduced, right? Because that's also the point of it is that Minneapolis is an over-policed city. And um, so the the new amendment, uh, part of the thing that it would do is transfer police power from the mayor to the city council, right? Because in a lot of these cities, in most of these cities, the, the police are just kind of there as the mayor's guards, that's it. That's really it. That's what they're there for. They're just protecting the mayor. They're just the the mayor's fucking hired guns. Uh, and, uh, and, and we've seen this all throughout history, right? When the Boston police strike happened, they just deputized college students. Same thing happened in Seattle during the, during that general strike, the mayor deputized a bunch of people that were like, that he was basically their job to protect the mayor. That's it. That's all they were fucking there to do. So, if it's with city council, that means that a larger number of people have to make a decision um, on what the police can and can't do. So you're you're going to get a little bit more of a consensus rather than just one person saying what it can and can't do. Uh, was the other one, and then it was, and then it was reducing the amount of cops um, that would be a part of the Minneapolis police department. Right. So, so it goes down to the minimum police based on population. And, uh, and, and, and we need that because there's a constant, constant cycle, um, of recruitment for cops going on. I mean, nonstop every, every time I was on the road, right. Right. When I would listen to music, I, I had Spotify back then and I didn't, I didn't have the money to pay for Spotify uh, when I was a touring comedian. And uh, and so I would listen to the ads. And every, I mean, every time I was on the road, at least one of these cities would have a recruitment ad where they were specifically looking for veterans. They were lo specifically looking for veterans to join the police force. So they're just recruiting people. So that was part of, th those were some of the major parts of that bill. So those are some of the major parts of that bill. 44% of the people voted yes. So, you know, the the anti, basically the liberals, basically anybody that watches corporate media um, can't say that this was a shutout because it wasn't a fucking shutout. 44% is a large number of people. That's that's almost a dead, like you're getting close to a fucking deadlock, right? Um Communities that were more diverse voted yes uh, in that 44%. Communities that, that that were more diverse voted yes because communities that are more diverse, that have a more minority population, are the ones that are getting accosted by the cops the most. That's what happens. Uh, that is a reality. You can choose to accept or not accept, but if you choose to not accept it, you're just living in a fantasy world. You're living in a fantasy world where it's acceptable uh, for a murderer who happens to be white uh, to cry because someone touched his gun. That's the fantasy world you get to live in. And you can choose to live in that world, but just know uh, that you're fucking wrong. Okay, uh, moving on. Most young people voted yes. Um, and uh, where we really see the trouble in, in both white, black, and brown communities is the elderly people, right? The, o the older voters, and regardless of color or anything like that, voted against the amendment, voted against the amendment to defund the police and, and essentially take the mayor's power away um, from utilizing the police the, the, the way they choose see fit, which in this case would, would be essentially to attack uh, 
black and brown communities and protesters, which is which is what cops do. That's that's primarily what cops do. Cops cops protect infrastructure, right? They protect buildings, they protect pipelines, they protect fucking cell towers. They don't protect the people because if they protected the people, we wouldn't hear so many fucking stories about black people and brown people, indigenous people, white people, whoever getting fucking murdered by the cops. And oh, we wouldn't see fucking tear gas and rubber bullets being fired point blank at protesters. Because those would be the people that they have to fucking protect. Usually, when it comes to older people, you know, the, the generalization is that they have a harder time with transformational change. Very few old people, when I talk to them about defunding the police or anything like that, are okay with that idea. They go, oh, well, you know, I think the co- they need more training, but that's going to cost more money. And it's like, no, 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 they have the money for all that shit. They're just using it to buy weapons. Nah, well, that's not what they would do. You know, it's 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 a lot of mental gymnastics to to justify not defunding the police to the level that I think we, we need to. And the other side of it as to why these elderly folks would vote against, you know, and and this is coming after waves and waves of uh, Black Lives Matter protests, waves and waves of, uh, you know, defund the police protests, just protests against police brutality itself, which, you know, to, to basically be like, hey, us cops are not brutalizing the community, ram them with the car. Show them that we're not brutal by ramming them with a with a ten ton vehicle. Do it, do it. That'll show them we are peaceful people. Shoot them in the face with the rubber. Shoot them in the in the face. Try to get the rubber bullet inside somebody's skull. Just a, not a lot, just a little bit. Be compassionate. Don't be a sicko, Jerry. You son of a bitch. But that's that's what it. That's uh, that's how the cops were like. We're not brutal. Brutalize the fuck out of these people and show them that we're not brutal. Like that's what we say. And even after that, there are people that are kind of older that were like, eh, "What if we sat them down and said no? I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it. With just a real t- a no, and that's it. Works on my dog every time." Right, like that's kind of the like. What are you talking about? The, the whole system needs to be gutted from the inside out. We need to completely transform what policing in this country actually looks like. But that's what that's what the argument uh, from the opposite side is, right? That and that's and that's how these uh, people get propagandized. And Fox News is an obvious. That's a, duh. Fucking Fox News is going to come out and they call Black Lives Matter Marxist. Oh no, like fucking freaking out over socialism and one bearded dude from the 1800s who had some very pointy things to say. Uh, But they were like, oh, this guy, he's still killing society and he's coming for your freedom and he's and he's going to go through the butt. That's what he's going to do. That's the Fox News just freaks out about that shit all the fucking time. But CNN was doing it. MSNBC was doing it, right? Uh, You know, CNN put out an article over the summer that I that I covered, where they basically said, "Well, all these cities that have had that have had these Black Lives Matter protests, and these defund the police protests, um, you know, they they are seeing a, a, a an increase in in the crime wave because there's just not enough cops. All these cops have to be allocated to deal with this protest, and all these protests are riots, right? So they so they kind of falsely equated the increase in crime rates." To police officers needing to be at a, which like they don't need to be at this protest. Most of these people are peacefully protesting, and guess what? They don't fucking want you around. That's the point of the protest, man. <laughs> the point of the protest is that you guys are around a little too much, and when you guys are around, you guys get a little, you know, murdery. Let's call it just a little homicidal-ish, if you will. So maybe don't fucking show up. With your guns and your armor. Why do you need an armor when there's a kid with a water bottle and some signs? Isn't that isn't this what you're trained to do? Like, that's what all of your training says. You're, because the training is, the police training is basically that everybody is your enemy. The, the general public is your enemy. That's how they fucking treat it.
there were very few cities that actually went through defunding the police, right? Uh, especially in 2020 uh, and 2021, which is this year. And at that point, when the CNN article had come out, there were very few cities that had gone through the defunding the police, like approved defunding the police and reallocating the budget to social services and so on and so forth. None of those cities got actually saw an increase in violent crimes. Austin didn't. Like, you would think that these people coming up be like, oh, man, people are going to be setting shit on fire if you defund the police. Okay, there's going to be at least one guy. I know I know at least two guys that would do this, that they would stand in every street corner and just masturbate. Is that what you want? You want things on fire and our sidewalks covered in spunk. Is that what you want? That's what you want? Then go ahead, defund the police. Defund the police all day. Do it all day. None of that shit has fucking happened in these cities that have actually done it. Police presence tends to be the spark of violence. That's where the violence starts, through police presence. When the cops show up to any of these protests, they're the ones that engage. In. Historically speaking, that's how it's worked. Most strikes are completely peaceful. And then, you know, the fucking hired guns, the, the Pinkertons show up, the cops show up, and then boom. Somebody's getting beaten in the head. We're, we're, bombs are flying all over the place. People getting shot. It's mass chaos, pandemonium everywhere. <laughs> you know? What we need is community policing. I, I, you know, people on the left, including myself, have been saying this for over a goddamn year now. Community policing, that's what we need. Right? Uh, community-based policing with less combat training. And no one is saying that these people shouldn't be trained to defend themselves. Uh, but they're not trained to defend themselves. They are trained to kill people. They need less combat training and more de-escalation training. More training on how to talk to, I don't know, like a fucking human. You know how it was like some people just don't know how to talk to like people? Uh, and and like instead of when somebody goes like, hey, how's it going? How are you? It's good to it's good to see you. Uh, and instead of like saying what normal people would would say back, which, which would be like, oh, it's good to see you, too. How are you? How are the kids? Uh, they like shoot you in the face. Co cops need to be trained not to shoot people in the face. Uh, and community based policing would do that. Not only that, but half the people that are in the, you know, that p police these neighborhoods. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky to live in a community where where the cops are from here. Right. Um but I also don't have to interact with the cops very often. Uh, somebody once asked me how many times I see police. I'd say a, f a few times a week. And then they told me that in Germany, they see them like once or twice a month. That's how often they see cops in their communities, in their neighborhoods. Just once or twice a month. That's all it takes. Uh, I still, even though I live in a pretty good community, and, uh, you know, I don't see a lot of cops anymore. And the cops do live in the neighborhood that they police. Um, I would still say I see the cops a few times a week, a few times a week. Um, but that's the other part, too, is most of these cops don't live in the neighborhoods that they police. They live out in the burbs. They come into these you know, low income neighborhoods, neighborhoods that aren't theirs. They don't know the dynamics of how things work. They don't know who's coming and going. They don't, you know, they're, they just don't because they're not neighbors. And, and they also don't have to give a shit about that community because they don't fucking live there. So they have no invest. They have nothing invested, nothing at stake there. Community based policing would get rid of that problem. The cops would live in the place that they actually protect and actually work. They would know the ins and outs Right. They would know that I I frequently would take walks randomly or if I was a touring comic. Yeah, there's going to be some times that, oh, it's Chris. He, he sometimes shows up at two thirty in the morning because he just drove back from Toledo. No worries. No big deal. You know, like they would know that kind of stuff. They would know that, oh, this is. Yeah, Mrs. Wallowitz has a little bit of a problem. Sometimes she what, gets out into the streets and kind of yells at the neighbors and you just got to kind of, you know. I remember um, this was maybe two, three or four years ago now. 
but I used to live in, in Garfield, which is a neighborhood in Pittsburgh. And, uh, and my, a, a friend of mine was coming over. I, I, w- I was in town and, and a friend of mine was touring through, they had a night off and they had a, you know, a, a long drive that they were going to split up into two. And, you know, I was like, come stay, uh, stay with us, you know, we'll, we'll put you up in our futon and we'll hang out and get some dinner and all that sort of stuff. And as they were coming, I said, don't get on my street. Um, uh, I'll let you know when it's like, okay to get here. And he was like, what's going on? And I was like, well, there's cops outside my house, uh, with guns drawn at one of our neighbors. Uh, and, and, and our neighbor was, you know, a, a little bit further down the road and, and he was, uh, an elderly black man. And, uh, the, they, the cops got called by somebody. I'm not really sure who, uh, but he was having a bit of an episode. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think he was schizophrenic. And was just having an episode and the family had it taken care of, but the situation got a little loud. And so the cops got called uh, and they had guns drawn at this elderly fucking black man that was having an episode and just needed to be talked down from what was happening to him, which I'm not going to pretend to understand because I don't have schizophrenia. I've never experienced anybody with schizophrenia, but they locked down the whole street. Five cop cars showed up, guns drawn. I mean, that's just exacerbating the situation. That's going to make things worse. Do you really feel like someone having a schizophrenic episode needs to have a gun, several guns pointed in their face? If it was community-based policing, they would know, hey, this guy's schizophrenia. We probably shouldn't have the guns. Let's try to get them inside. Let's let's try not to disturb the neighbors. Let's just get them inside the house. Take care of them a little bit. That's what they need to be trained on. And and there needs to be more accountability when it comes to police murders, period. So I think part of the problem is countering this propaganda where elderly voters are now going to vote against the benefit of of society, right? Uh, and, and they're and they're being told that they are voting for the benefit of society. But that's going to come down to the 44% of the you know the, the 44% that voted yes and people from that camp because we're going to need to see more people getting educated and combating propaganda because like I said the media kind of picks up on these stories and they become too big to ignore and they have to fucking talk about it. So, you know, to fund the police, Black Lives Matter, you know, restructuring of the police system in and of itself has been a topic of conversation for a very long time. I mean, I probably started talking about it in like 2013, 2014. And at that point, it was such a fringe topic that I became like a fringe person, even within my, even within my weirdo fucking fringy community to call for, hey, maybe we need to reallocate some of these funds. Maybe we need to reduce the number of co-. like saying that sort of shit uh, was a very fringe ideology. Right. So I think for us now that kind of people are on board with this idea because they see what we've been talking about for the last decade or two. Um, it's it's time they get educated because when when these ideas get introduced, everybody believes them to be extreme because it's so antithetical to how society actually operates, right? I mean, and it is it is completely antithetical to the way that society operates. So because it is that, they're going to be resistant to the idea. They might agree with it in concept, but executing it is going to be a completely different thing because they're not ready for the consequences of that kind of change unless we educate them, right? Uh, you know, reminding them that policing comes from a, a, from slave patrols where black people were thought as property and that ideology has never faded away. And we have proof that that ideology has never faded away. And they're likely going to agree with that. Then we can talk about the execution of things. What's going to happen? How are we going to deal with the violent crime? Well, detectives are still going to be there. And we're not going to get rid of violence, violent impulses just by saying we're changing the way that policing works. It's a start to it, for sure. Violent. Sometimes violent outbursts come when people think that they're going to get in trouble and they feel desperate. So 
again, the other part of that now is that the criminal justice system is now going to get changed. Laws and the way that laws and punishments are dealt out are, are going to have to change. If we're going to take a community approach to law enforcement, then we're going to have to take a community approach to law and punishment and prisons and so on and so forth as well. So that outward kind of trans transformation is scary to these folks. But if we educate them and say there are benefits to this, and it's hard, and it's time-consuming, and it can be frustrating at times because, because you're, you have to constantly keep battling propaganda. But if it's more than just you know, a few of us, if there's a lot more people kind of getting in on this conversation, then change is going to change is going to come a lot faster. You're, you're going to get a lot more people that are going to be able to accept that kind of transformational change. Really, what it should be about the the, the primary goal of of this of this education, and and that's sort of the way that I'm what the direction I want to take this channel is is this political education side of it. Really, the 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 major thing we should be talking about is quelling fear because let's be honest we're human beings are scared creatures we, we think from our amygdalas more than which is why we have police brutality because we think from the lizard brain than we do than the rest of this fucking thing right we have an entire emotional spectrum to choose from and we only go with fear and anger that's that's a, a lot of the fucking decisions that we made is through fear and anger um you know, I'm, and I'm sure some of you guys might have heard my stand-up bit that I'm actually reworking and rewriting uh, about the amygdala and stuff. But we can make a choice, and I think it's going to come from the younger generation. Uh, it's going to come from the, the lefty people that have this knowledge. And instead of kind of hoarding that knowledge, we share that amongst people as much as possible, um, which is why... You know, which is why I kind of think that when lefties argue <laughs> over like stupid shit, uh, it's kind of pointless. So, um, yeah, educate people and quelling fear. That's what it should be about. Try to have those conversations because what they don't want is what they don't want is people reading beyond CNN. They want CNN to be the be all, be all end all of, of where they get their news. And CNN and MSNBC and NPR, all of them don't want you to defund the police. The Democrats and Republicans, neither party wants you to defund the police. Neither party wants to see any sort of transformational change. Um, and Aiden brings up a good point here, right? Fear and anger, that's the whole GOP platform. Yeah, it is. Uh, and and arguably, it's also the Democrats' platform is <laughs> fear and anger, right? We're, we're just going to make people scared and make them angry at the Republicans. Uh, uh, so yeah. All right, folks, we are going to wrap this Psalm bitch up. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out, tuning in. Uh, like I said, if you guys enjoy this stuff, uh, please do make sure that you hit the like and share button and please make sure that you are subscribed to wherever you want to fucking get this thing. Um, but usually I'll go live on, on, uh, Rockfin. Uh, Facebook and Twitter for now. I might switch that up to Odyssey if if I if I feel brave enough to do that again. Uh, but it is it is it is kind of difficult. Like it's not difficult. It's just a little bit more time consuming to, to stream on uh, on Odyssey. And I wanted to kind of get to this as quickly as possible. The next stream, the next stream is going to be December fourth. So mark your calendars. Uh, I am going to try to figure out scheduling because <laughs> I think I can schedule streams and stuff. I should figure out how that works and and kind of get to the ins and outs of that a little bit. Um, yeah, but December 4th, same time, 4 p.m., uh, I'll be kicking that off. And I only did, you know, about an hour here, but I'll, I'll try to have a, a, a bunch more stories picked out for the week um, to to cover and discuss and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but, uh, if you, if you, uh, haven't already and you're in, in a position to do so, please feel free to donate over on my website at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. Um, you know, the streams are going to be free. They'll go on Rockfin. They'll become premium in, in 24 hours. Uh, but pretty much a bunch of stuff I do is, is, is available for free. And if you enjoy it, if you find value to it, 
um, you know, and you have the uh, the the coin. Um, feel free to donate, become a sustaining member. Uh, that's that's uh, how you help put food on the old table and help make this a, a, a more of a full time thing and improve the quality. Uh, more 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 importantly, the quality of of um, of the streams and the content. Uh, and, uh, if you haven't watched my update video for the channel, uh, I talk a lot about the projects that I'm going to be, uh, going to be putting out into, in, into the, into the world. Um, so if you're interested in any of those projects and some of those projects are going to be a little bit more involved, they're going to, they're going to take me a lot of time because, um, I do, I'm, I'm a, I'm a one man circus, you guys, that's, that's kind of the way that I run this shit. I'm a one man circus. Uh, so your donations would, would help keep the circus operating. Uh, essentially, and uh, and a great way to find out when I'm going to go live. Um, links to virtual shows, which I've got a bunch of virtual shows coming. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, live shows, uh, and and pretty much a, a link to all of the videos and podcasts that I put out. Plus, sometimes essays and stories and stuff like that. Sign up for my email list, krishmohanhaha.substack.com. Uh, I send it out once a week on Sundays. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just a nice little place for, uh, all my stuff to live. And that way, uh, we get to fight some suppression. We get to fight some censorship <laughs> through the email list. Um, I mentioned that, uh, you know, um, virtual shows coming up here, uh, next Friday, Ju uh, November 19th is the fork full of noodles live and virtual that's coming back. Uh, tickets are available on my website right now. And then the Friday after that, Black Friday, I'm going to be doing um, a, a virtual performance of my new stand-up show, The Citizen Revolution. I'm going to see if I can get uh, get an opener on that show as well. If not, it'll just be me kind of doing doing the show. Uh, and uh, and that's kind of how I'm going to do it through the winter. Um, and then uh, as, as, as for 2022 touring, a couple people have asked me if I'm going to be touring in 2022. I would like to. I would like to, um, and I've got a couple announcements coming up, but really the way that I kind of want to do touring in 2022, um, is doing some one-off shows and not some larger tours. So really picking uh, cities or areas and doing something short or over the weekend, uh, and, and spending time with, with people as well. So, you know, cities like Minneapolis, Norfolk, uh, Virginia, uh, Cincinnati, DC, uh, where else? Bloomington, Illinois, uh, Lansing, Michigan, uh, obviously Pittsburgh, obviously my hometown of Pittsburgh. I'll be doing some shows in town. Uh, yes, Norfolk. I will be, I will be rebooking that show. Uh, and the reason why I kind of canceled all of my tour dates this year is because, because of the Delta variant. Um, and, uh, you know, I had to kind of rethink about, how I wanted to tour and what, what I wanted the future of my standup career to, to look like. Um, and, and, and I have missed being in my own city. I've missed seeing people and being, um, you know, with, with people that I love, uh, cause I toured around for 10 years and, uh, yeah, I, I kind of toured nonstop. And, and I think I'm, I'm getting to that point where I'm like, I think a little bit of settling is not a bad thing. <laughs> You know, I, I and and for places that I'm not coming to, you know, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of cities on that list. But if I'm not coming to your city, I'm going to be doing those virtual stand up shows uh, and and you'll still get to see the stand up thing. And, and maybe that'll kind of push me to come come out to wherever else. So uh, the email list is a great way to keep uh, keep uh, up to date with uh, with all of that stuff. Again, next live stream date is December 4th. Got a bunch of content coming out in between that, but got a bunch of virtual shows coming out in between that as well. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Friday. If you're in Pittsburgh, come out to Mr. Smalls tonight at 8 p.m. for a fantastic comedy show. Uh, I'm not on the show, but I will be hanging out there. So if you if if you caught the stream, if you caught the video later, and and you and you come down to the show, uh, drop by, say hello, have a drink. Uh, enjoy some comedy, support some local art. Uh, but till then, uh, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.